I would really like to evict this little Berg cabinet or desk lock from my naughty bucket. He's been living there a long time, and when you take a look at this warding, I think you might start to understand why he got a long-term lease. Very, very nasty, paracentric, and warded keyway. To make it even nicer, here's what the key looks like. It's a six-pinner, and in the front we have some very low-cut pins, and then you got to figure out how to get these high-cut ones in between all of that nasty warding. It works kind of neat. Let's slide it in there and let me describe to you what's going to happen first. I'm only going to rotate this about an eighth of a turn and the locking bar uh, is actually screwed into the back of this lock. So when I turn this an eighth of a turn, then the front of the lock will slide out away from the front of the cabinet. It pulls that locking bar out of position and allows you to get in. Internally, the way it works, you see this little hole. When I slide it back in and I turn the key back and now relocks him inside that little hole. So this has to be completely protected. Otherwise, some smarty pants is gonna come in there with a little probe, push that plunger down and he's gonna get an open. So it's probably behind, behind a steel front desk or a steel front cabinet to keep you from doing exactly that. Let me go ahead and lock this bad boy back up. I'm gonna get him clamped up. I'm gonna put a mark on him and let's see if I can finally get it picked because I got a new pick that's going to give me half of a chance. I got a German lock. I'm going to try a German pick. All right, that ought to hold it. Works beautifully. And I will, let me zoom in and put a mark on this guy here. Try to get him a little bit in focus. Try that. And I put a mark right there. Let's see what we do. What I'm going to try, this is a brand new pick from Multipick, and it is, it's written on the blade here somewhere, PN07. And I like it because, well, it's 22 thousandths of an inch thick, but it has a very sharp and fine tip, which might let me get past those gatekeepers in the front of this bad boy and, and work that tiny little tip up between that warding and attack the individual pins in the back. I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to find out. I need a tensioner now. Let's try this guy. All right, that ought to work. This, by the way, is a bent. He's, he's the serrated one from Peterson, which is kind of bent. And then the handle, I just bent it. Uh, there's nothing on it, no serrations. It wasn't intended to be used as a tensioner, but I bent it years ago because it's, ni it's the right size for a lot of these really... Uh, tight locks. All right, here we go. All the way in. Oh, man. Let me work them around the corner there. All right, light tension. And let's see what we got. Okay, that was four. Three. A lot of that crunching you're hearing, if you can hear it, is... Uh, just the warding. Okay, that was two, one, I'm not feeling any security pins in this guy. They may just be depending entirely on the precision of the lock and this incredible warding. Get around that corner there. Okay, I think that was six. Okay, that was two again, he'd fallen down. One is still springy. That was four. Okay, that was one. Ah, yes! Yes! Eviction notice, baby! All right, got rid of this bird. Unfortunately, let me pull this guy out of here. There's really no way to take them apart. There is, 
There's no screws or anything on the back. It looks like it, these tabs, it was put in and these tabs were probably welded. There appears to be a broken screw head right there. Because I'm evicting him once and for all, and this is my lock, what I'm going to try to do, maybe I can punch that in. Let's try it. All right, I'm just going to probably grind him off, and let's see if we can't pull this out and take a look and see what's inside of this lock. I'm just curious. All right, guys, I just took my grinder and I ground off the, the unbroken part of what I believe is a screw head. I think now when I turn that key, he will probably, hopefully, come out. No? He's starting to come out, though. I think if I apply a little force here, maybe... Maybe a little more force. Let me find a Phillips. I'm going to hold him here. And I'm going to hit him. I don't have a hammer, so I'm going to have to use my big pliers. And there he comes. Okay. There's your spring, and there's your locking lug. <laughs> there we go. It looks like they pinned him from the bottom. I don't see anything on top here. I am not sure how this is going to work, quite honestly, but we've come this far. I don't know if that's just going to... No, it's never that easy, is it? There's a pin driven down in here. That's probably what's holding the core in. We're out of luck. Sorry about that, guys. It was worth a try, though, but uh, not today. At least now I can put them back together, kind of, and send them to somebody else in the, uh, in the Lock Lab crew. Anyway, guys, <laughs> interesting little diversion anyway, right? Thanks for your time. Stay safe. Stay legal. Hold on. Before you leave, click that subscribe button. And while you're there, click that notification bell as well. If you'd like to be a sponsor, click there. And for five bucks a month, you get all kinds of benefits. If that's not enough free stuff, hit the Lock Lab. We've got a self-paced lockpicking course with over a dozen modules at the bottom of the page. Join the tribe. Subscribe.